Today we're going to talk about one of the most symbolic items on a police officer's duty belt, the expandable baton. So what is a baton? Simply put, a baton is an impact weapon used to immobilize a person by hitting pressure points on the body, namely the joint areas. There's a lot of history behind it. As you can see on the left picture, the baton was symbolic of a police officer's authority, typically holding the royal seal and serving as a warrant card. It's also been very illustrative of Teddy Roosevelt's foreign policy. He can be seen in many pictures being shown with a large stick, and this is symbolic of the baton itself. He famously said, speak softly and carry a big stick. You will go far. Although the baton came into existence during the 1800s with Robert Peel's bobbies, it has since that time become more symbolic as a tool of oppression and police brutality. The baton's gone over many variations since the 1800s. Initially, it was considered a truncheon or billy club. It's come through other designs in the form of the straight stick, the sap, the blackjack, the side handle baton, and finally, the most recently, the expandable baton. Before the side handle baton, all the other variations were designed to actually incapacitate a person by hitting them in the head in order to induce a concussion, literally knocking them out. This was especially the case for the sap and the blackjack. Ultimately, the design process led to the expandable baton, which is easier to deploy, conceal, and is much safer compared to its older counterparts. The telescopic or expandable baton works by applying centrifugal force in order to deploy it. The device uses a series of interlocking shafts in order to keep the baton locked in place when it's deployed. These tubes or shafts are held in place with the help of retention rings and grooves. This is the result of an extended baton. The shafts allow the baton to be easily deployed and retracted as needed. It comes in different sizes, typically 12 inches, 16 inches, 21, and 24 inches long. This provides you as much length as you need for concealability or extended reach in an altercation. Batons are commonly known as ASPs, just as stun guns are considered as tasers. It's a genericized trademark. This stands for Armament Systems and Procedures, which is one of the most widely known expandable baton manufacturers in the United States. ASP Incorporated has its own types of batons, but there are three variations that apply to any expandable baton, really. The differences between the three are in how the interlocking shafts help to collapse the baton. The most commonly used type is the friction lock baton. In order to collapse it, you have to bang the end tip of the baton onto a hard surface such as the ground. As a result, it takes longer to retract this type of baton compared to others. The next type is the lever lock baton. For this one, you have to twist the individual shafts of the baton in order to retract it. And finally, the newest type is the disc lock baton. I commonly call this the push button baton because ASP has a model called the Air Talon, which has a button on the end cap of the baton which you can push in order to retract the shafts. This is by far the easiest way to retract a baton because it requires no friction or force in order to do so. As mentioned before, older batons such as the sap and the blackjack were used to hit a person in the head in order to incapacitate them. The problem with these is that they cause severe head trauma, and sometimes fatalities. With the creation of the expandable baton, the target areas of the body have been changed. The ideal sections of the body to strike are the joints, namely the arms and the legs. The target areas to completely avoid 
are the solar plexus, the spine, the back of the neck, the head, and the groin. This is why, as a civilian, you should definitely get training on this. Not only to go over target areas, but also to properly deploy a baton. There's a number of different brands out there. As mentioned before, ASP or ASP is the most well-known brand or manufacturer of expandable batons. But we also have Monadnock, Peacekeeper, Smith & Wesson, and a number of other brands. Some more expensive than others, of course. I personally haven't tried Monadnock or Peacekeeper, but I've heard a lot of good things about them in the law enforcement community. I personally own an ASP Air Talon. I've used a Smith & Wesson baton before. They're pretty good. They're very affordable. And, uh, yeah, it really depends on what your price range is and what type of quality that you want. But these four you really can't go wrong with. Now we come to the advantages and disadvantages of the baton. Of course, as we mentioned in this lecture, the baton itself is psychologically powerful. It's not as significant or as feared as the taser device, but it still has an influence over people. Of course, it's very physically strong. It's an impact weapon. It's typically made out of aluminum alloy or steel, depending on the manufacturer, and it can do a lot of damage. It's also very easy to deploy. It's just a flick of the wrist and it's out and ready to go. But there are, of course, disadvantages to using this. One is that it is a pain compliance tool. So if you're dealing with someone who's intolerant to pain or has a high resistance, or if they're intoxicated or on drugs, then it's not going to have much of an effect. That's if you're a civilian or if you're especially a police officer. Another problem is that it does, of course, require extensive training. You have to know how to properly deploy it, how to swing or move your body on impact, and of course, know where to actually hit on the body. Really, any product requires training, but this requires more training than, say, pepper spray or a stun gun. And finally, the biggest issue with the expandable baton for use with civilians is that it is illegal in many states because it's considered a dangerous weapon. The statutes per state are typically very vague. For example, here in Minnesota, there's no reference of batons whatsoever. So they're technically legal so long as you use them for self-defense and not just go out and you know, hit somebody with it. Typically with a less than lethal product or a less lethal product, it's more to do with the intent of what the person is planning to do with the device rather than the actual weapon itself. The other issue is that expandable batons are usually not listed underneath the name itself. It's typically underneath blackjack or sap or some other variation being referenced in the actual statute. So things can get really tricky with that. You just have to be aware of it and if you're not a lawyer then it's best to either consult with an attorney or ask your local police department if a baton is legal in your jurisdiction or your state. That's all I have for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to start talking about coup batons.